For our last example of second order differential equations, we're going to do an initial value problem. So most of the problem will be just like the ones we've done earlier, but we'll also have to solve for the constant C1 and C2 using these initial values that we're given. So we're going to start the same way we always have by writing the characteristic equation for this differential equation, r squared plus 6r plus 5 equals 0. And then if we can factor, we'll do that. Otherwise, we'll use the quadratic formula. But this one factors pretty easily. r plus 5 times r plus 1 equals 0. So we know we have two distinct real answers for r, negative 5 and negative 1, which means that y will be c1 e to the negative 5t plus c2 e to the negative 1t. Now we just need to solve for the constants c1 and c2. Notice that one of our initial conditions is a condition on y, and the other one is a condition on y prime. So we need to write down what y prime equals given our solution here. So all we do is take the derivative of c1 e to the negative 5t and so on. So taking the derivative of that first piece would give us negative 5 c1 e to the negative 5t. And the derivative of the second piece would be negative 1 c2 e to the negative t. Just using the chain rule on each piece to take the derivative. Now if we plug in these initial values, if t equals 0, y equals 2. So we have 2 equals c1. And now notice what happens. e to the negative 5 times 0 is just 1. And e to the negative 1 times 0 is also just 1. So we simplify things a lot by using 0 for our initial conditions here. It turns out to make the algebra much, much simpler. So we have 2 equals c1 plus c2. And then with the first derivative, if we plug in t for 0, y prime equals 1. So we have 1 equals negative 5 c1. And again, e to the negative 5 times 0 is just 1, minus c2, and again, e to the negative 1 times 0 equals 1 as well. So we have this system of two equations for c1 and c2. And all we need to do is solve that using one of our algebraic techniques like substitution or elimination. Either one will work. If you need to brush up on your algebra skills, this would be a good time to do it. But we just need to solve this system of equations, again, using either substitution or elimination. It looks like the way they're set up, elimination will be pretty easy to do because we have a plus c2 in one column and a minus c2 underneath it. So if we simply add the two equations, we'll get 3 equals negative 4c1, and the c2s cancel each other, so c1 equals negative 3 fourths. And once we know that, we can plug that into either one of those two equations. For instance, if we plug it into the first one, we get 2 equals negative 3 fourths plus c2, from which we can solve and get c2 equals 11 fourths. So again, if you need to review this algebra, this would be a good time to do it. But at the end of that, we get those two values for c1 and c2, which means we are done. Our final answer is c1, or negative 3 fourths, times e to the negative 5t, plus c2, or 11 fourths, e to the negative t. So again, which solution you call y1 and which one you call y2 is really up to you. You can swap them without any danger. But once you start solving for c1 and c2, you need to be consistent and put c1 with the right solution and c2 with the other one. So once we started solving for c1 and c2, we're kind of locked in. And once we get c1, we know that's the one that's multiplied by e to the negative 5t and so on. So there's our final answer, and we can solve initial value problems like this by doing the same setup as the previous examples, and then the added algebra of solving using the initial conditions that are given.